Hey, AP Physics 1 students, we're looking at Unit 7 FRQ4 from the AP Classroom Progress Checks. Great to see you. This is Mr. Heinrich. Let's jump in. So we have a simple pendulum consisting of a string of negligible mass and a small sphere as shown in the figure. The sphere has a mass M and its center of mass is located at distance L from where the top end of the string is attached to the ceiling. The diameter of the sphere is negligible relative to the length of the string. The sphere is released from rest with the string having an initial angle theta naught from the vertical as indicated. In a second pendulum, an identical small sphere is attached to a longer string than the string used in the original pendulum. The sphere in the second pendulum is released from rest with the string having the same initial angle theta naught from the vertical as in the original pendulum. A. Indicate how the maximum speed V2 of the sphere in the second pendulum compares to the maximum speed V1 of the sphere in the original pendulum. So just to keep things straight, the first pendulum has a length L and the second pendulum has a longer length string. But the sphere is exactly the same size and the angle of release is exactly the same angle. So let's get into which one of these velocities is bigger. Well, I know it's V2 is greater than V1, so we're going to check that box. All right, we've selected the correct answer. V2 is greater than V1. Now let's qualitatively justify. In the case of the longer string, a greater arc length and thus a greater vertical drop occur. And I'm going to do a little side by side to show them. So there's my diagrams and they're proving the point perfectly because we see we have a greater vertical drop with the longer string. And this is okay to do because we're being told to do this qualitatively or descriptively. I'm not showing math, I'm just showing diagrams. I'm going to go on to say a greater vertical drop means a greater gravitational potential energy release, which transforms into a greater kinetic energy and thus a greater velocity for the longer string. Nailed it. All right, write that down. You can include the pictures, but you don't have to, but it really sells the point that we're trying to make. Moving on to part B. Consider the original pendulum and the case where the string makes an initial angle theta naught from the vertical. Part B. Starting with the conservation of energy, derive an equation for the magnitude A sub V of the sphere's acceleration at the instant the string is vertical. Express your answer in terms of M, L, theta naught, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by either writing a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. Before I jump into this derivation with you, I was a little thrown off by the question because we know as the pendulum comes to equilibrium, the restoring force becomes zero. And by the way, the restoring force is the x component of gravity, which is mg sine theta. So when my theta is zero, mg sine theta would be zero. We'd have no more restoring force. And therefore, without a restoring force, which is a net force, we would have zero acceleration. So when I first saw the question, I was like, this doesn't make sense. Is it a trick question? But I forgot something very important that you will not forget because I know you're studying like crazy for this test. And that is that when we're swinging through equilibrium, there's still a center seeking linear acceleration we call centripetal acceleration. So this A sub V that they want us to find has everything to do with that centripetal acceleration along with developing this conservation of energy idea. All right, let's get it done. So here comes our derivation. Here's our given information. This is what we're looking for. And this is the system. This is length L, so is this, but I need to find this height. And the reason I need to find this height is because they want us to do the conservation of mechanical energy. So we know there's potential energy due to gravity right here. And we know that potential energy is gonna to convert to kinetic energy at this location. We are treating this height right here as the zero level. So there's our conservation of mechanical energy. Remember, we're starting from rest, so all we have is initial potential energy converting to kinetic energy at this location where we have a height of zero, so there's no more potential energy. Let's plug in the expressions that go with each one of these types of energy. So this would be mgh initial equals one half mvf squared. So again, we need to figure out this initial height based on some trigonometry. So if I shoot a line straight across and I create this right triangle, then I can see I have this length right here. What would this length be in terms of that L? Well, it's the adjacent side next to this angle, so I would say it's the hypotenuse 
times the cosine of the angle. It is L cosine theta. And if I wanted to express this height in terms of L and L cosine theta, then what would I do? I'd take this length L and I would subtract L cosine theta, which would give me that height. That's how we do it. Height initial equals L minus L cosine theta. Now we can express this a little bit different and I could say HI equals L times the quantity one minus cosine theta. So at this point, let's plug some stuff in. The M's cancel out and I'm gonna solve for VF squared. VF squared would equal two GHI. I just multiplied two to the other side, flip the equation around, let's plug in HI. Okay, good, we're done with that part. Now let's go over to that centripetal acceleration I was talking about before. So at this location, there is a centripetal acceleration we are calling A sub V. How do I express that equation? I would say A sub V equals V squared over R. But what is R? R is the length of the pendulum itself. So V squared over my radius, which is L. And let's remember we're talking about our final velocity. And you can see why I didn't take the square root here. Look, I have VF squared in this equation. I have VF squared right here. So all I have to do is take all this stuff and plop it in right there for VF squared. So AV will equal all this stuff in for VF squared, 2GL times 1 minus cosine theta, all divided by L. And look at that. We just cross out our L's and it simplifies one more time. AV equals 2G times 1 minus cosine theta. All right, just about done. Let's go over to part C. Part C, using the equation you derived in part B, indicate whether the sphere's acceleration at the instant the string is vertical is greater for the original pendulum, greater for the second pendulum, or the same for both pendulums. Describe how the equation justifies your claim. And here's what I would say. The sphere's acceleration is the same for both the short pendulum and the long pendulum, period. Looking at the expression for the final acceleration at the vertical, and then write this equation in parentheses. You can see that the equation is independent of the length of the string. And therefore, since the angle is the same for both situations and everything else is a constant, then the acceleration will be the same for both the short pendulum and the long pendulum, period. All right, that's all we got to do for that one. I hope you're doing well. Keep studying. Mr. Heinrich, I'm out of here. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.